I am actually in a state of shock right now. I just woke up and I opened my emails and I got an email from my freight folder because I emailed them yesterday saying, hey, just making sure the shipment of mascaras is still due to arrive tomorrow. And they replied and said, we just got notice from the, um, the, I don't know, whatever, that it hasn't even gone through customs in the US. I am surprised I'm not crying. I don't understand. She said it's an absolute mess over there. And I just called her. And she said, we haven't ever seen this happen before. <laughs> so, um, it takes at least 30 days. At least. It hasn't passed customs. It has to, has to pass customs. So I said, I've got another shipment that's like due to arrive a couple months after that by sea. Can we change that to air and hopefully have it by next week? So that's good in the theory. But the thing about that is, it was going to cost almost $3,000 to send that shipment via sea freight from the US to Sydney. And it takes like 30 days, so that's why it is cheaper. It's going to cost, oh, I don't even want to know, via air, minimum $10,000. Minimum. Minimum. I'd say 12 or 13, probably even, maybe even 15 grand just because it's so quick and it's such a big shipment and it's so heavy. God, I don't know how much it's going to cost and I can't split the shipments. Actually, maybe I could. I don't know. I need to figure this out, but I, <laughs> and I can't even say like, if I still stick with the sea freight, which I will have to, I'm, I'm going to have to work on this new shipment now and figure something out with that. Who knows when this other one will arrive at, at this point. I went from thinking like, damn, I wish I didn't order this second shipment because I want to sell through the first shipment and then get rid of that packaging and then bring in the new packaging. But perhaps the second one's going to be my saving grace at this point because I've got no other options. I can't believe it. This is what I, this is the fun part about business. <laughs> I've been telling you guys, I've got people contacting me saying like, you said like a month ago, a month ago, a month ago before, a month before that, it was going to be here. Like keep checking the website. Nothing's on there. Have I missed it? No, you haven't. Nothing's happened. It just keeps getting pushed back month by month, week by week. At this point, I may as well just start from scratch and bring in the new packaging, honestly. Like, far out. I cannot comprehend how... <laughs> and she said, like, you know, it, once it goes through customs, it could be like 30 days, so next month. And so in theory, one, one extra month, like, God, it's been 10 years. Like, what's an extra one month? But I just don't trust them now. Not the freight forward. I don't trust the, the like American uh, customs and stuff. I just don't. <laughs> I've been <laughs> told so many times it's like a month away. I just don't believe it. I don't know when it's going to get here. I cannot rely on that now. I've just got to invest in the. This is just going to be the most expensive <laughs> mascara. I'm going to have to raise the price, guys. It's going to be 80 bucks. <laughs> 80 bucks per tube. I'm kidding. I obviously won't change the price. I just will make a lot less money off this than I that I was going to use towards other things, like other products, which is fine. It is what it is. It's just, it's just the it's just the waiting that's more irritating than the money at this point. It's just like the not knowing. It's crazy because I got out of my pajamas and twenty set of pajamas. Anyway, it's crazy because literally yesterday I was thinking, oh my god, like what if something happened to the ship? And my container just like slid off the back or something and just was destroyed. Did I mention this in my earlier stories? I can't even remember. I don't know what's going on there right now. Imagine if it just like was destroyed. <laughs> Maybe I'm manifesting this into my life. Obviously it's not destroyed, but I have no clue when this damn thing is going to come. <sighs> it's been pushed back at least two months now. Um, no, about three months. Three months it, it, it will be by the end of it. What a sick, sick joke. Millennial Zoom. <laughs> I'm just going to hope that I can, even if I have to split the second shipment into two so that half of it is sent by air and won't cost me my life savings <laughs> and the other half is by sea. So at least the, what, what, those of you who are dying to get it can get the damn thing, damn it. Uh, I know we're just talking about mascara here and I keep telling myself like, you know, stressing about it, it's not going to change anything. There's only so much like positive thinking you can do until it's like, no, this is really irritating and I'm actually angry about it. 
it's just oh gosh I'm not, I'm not patient i'm not a patient person and this is beyond the realm of like oh just be patient no this is it looked like i was crying in that story i wasn't but i feel like i am on the inside and i haven't been telling you guys to be patient i haven't told one single person to be patient what a weird thing to say just be patient like no i've just been saying like it's it's coming and I also realized how many times I say like when I speak. I don't even realize I'm doing it when I'm speaking. So I'm going to make that a New Year's resolution to reduce the amount of times I say like. It's just a filler word when I'm trying to get my words out. Anyway, I'm just having a million thoughts at once at the moment. I need have breakfast. I need to brush my hair. Anyway. <laughs> Let's make a try with some free advertising for a core hotels. <laughs> Bristol Milk. I taught Reese how to make his own chai last night for when he gets up really early. Oops, too much. Too much, damn it. Uh, to go to work like he did this morning because otherwise I like making them for him. I just like making them. It's fun. So what I do is I pour the milk into the cup first so that, that way I know exactly how much milk I'm going to need rather than using their measurements. I don't really know, know how to follow um, the measurements. I mean, I do, but anyway, whatever. Conversions are confusing. Then I leave a little bit of space at the top. You can kind of see the milk ends there because I want to leave room for the foam. And then, whoops, Reese and I have been smashing this chai powder. Like, he has one any chance he gets, basically. I do as well. This machine has been the best thing ever. The Breville, Breville Milk Cafe. This lovely device. So we pop that on there. Turn it on, Reese didn't turn it off. <laughs> turn it on. I put it on the highest heat because I like them very hot. Then grab the chai. If you don't like sweet things, you probably won't like this very much. It's quite sweet and like milky, creamy. And then, actually, I'll take you at the uh, bird's eye view. Now it's ready. Oops, steamy. Damn it, I put too much milk in. Because you can see the little screw. What are they called? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I give up today. I don't want to pour the milk any higher than that <clears throat> because then it spills over when I. Um, Put the lid on. That'll be enough. Oh, what a waste. It's fine. And then just for the sake of it, I'll put a little bit of powder on top. Done. And then people are sending me messages like this, which is so nice. It's even worse because you guys are so nice and so patient. It's like, I feel like I'm just... I'm like one of those friends that's like pushing the relationship to its limits, like <laughs> asking too much. I'm asking too much. And, I'm, and by the way, I'm not going to charge $80. You're not paying more for it. This is not your problem to deal with. It's mine. <laughs> this online community is so unreal. Like my online community. I have like a handful of women that work in freight forwarding that are like looking out for me helping me with, with this mess, poking holes in the things I've been told, giving me advice, sharing contacts. Like this is literally like a group of friends that are helping each other out. I cannot believe it. Like I would not know half of this stuff because it's not something that I would experience in had it not been for you guys. Like this is so amazing. <laughs> oh, like, this is the good part about social media and like influencing It's having these connections with the people that I may not ever meet in my entire life, but there is a connection there because you guys have followed me for a long time. You know, like, you know, my story, you know, <laughs> like you obviously. 
I just feel very lucky to have this platform, to be able to reach people and have them reach me because it's like we're all helping each other out. I share things, you guys share things. It's just this really cool thing that's been accumulating since 2011. Oh, amazing. This is actually doing my head in. I feel like I'm shaky because I'm so stressed out from this. And now adding like the complexity of, am I being taken advantage of? Am I being taken for a ride? Is my inexperience being exploited? It's all just very fun to deal with. And I'm venting on here because Reese isn't home yet. So he'll get the full. Actually, I don't even feel like telling him because then I have to go from the start and I don't have the energy. Of course I will tell him, but <laughs> it's just too much. Oh my God. This is why it would be so good to have a massive company where you employ people to deal with this stuff that have experience and know what they're doing. Because right now I'm about to rip my brains out and put them in a blender. <laughs> In cute news, the rabbit is out yet again, tromping away at the grass. My hands are shaky because I'm stressed, so I don't mind that. <laughs> the way it takes us, ooh, cute, little crested pigeon. Bye. Today was one of those days that just drains you of all that you have. Like, I know things could be so much worse. You're the kind of person to say that when someone complains about little things going on in their life. Please unfollow me. Anyway, woke up to that news. Had to take Mia to the vet because she has some kind of ear infection. I dread taking her to the vet because her anxiety peaks through the entire roof. It is unbelievable how anxious she gets. She is shaking. She's whimpering. I'm trying to hold her. I have to take her harness off and hold her because her harness restricts her when she's breathing so fast because she's so stressed. And then she starts honking, coughing, and like wheezing and wheezing, wheezing, wheezing. Will not stop. Even the vets were like, oh, is she all right? Like, no, she's not. Meanwhile, I'm, I'm there for like 20 minutes longer than I should be because the vet who was meant to be seeing her is chatting away to other people when their appointment is done. No one apologizes that I've been waiting with this dog that's terrified for 20 minutes. <laughs> and then 20 minutes may not seem like a long time, but when you have this tiny little thing in your arms that is like literally causing herself to almost have like a heart attack because her heart's going a thousand miles an hour. She can't breathe properly. She's seeing all these other dogs that are stressed out crying, which is just feeding her into her anxiety. It made me think, I don't know how parents do it with babies, like women, especially how on earth do you deal with having sick children? It's so stressful. <laughs> Not because, like, it's stressful for, for her. I'm stressed because I'm worried about her. <sighs> anyway, and then people are messaging me saying, I think you're being taken advantage of by your freight forwarder. And then I go down that rabbit hole. So now I have another layer of stress added on top of what I was already stressed about. And then meanwhile, the house stuff is a mess because we're having to figure out where to put our new leech drains and new septic tanks because our firefighting driveway that we have to put in can't go where it was initially planned to go so now everything is this sweet little angel this sweet perfect little angel some she has special pills that i give her when like before she has a stressful event like a groomer or the vet um they were prescribed by the vet because otherwise she just again, loses her mind. But she's somehow managed to figure out a way to fight it off until after the event. I have given them to her at the recommended time, like before the event. It's usually two to three hours. I've given them at two hours, three hours, four hours, I've every time in between. And now it's horrible because whenever she needs to go to the vet, like she's had her little ear thing for a couple of days. Sometimes it does go away on its own when she's had it before. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a day or two just to see if it resolves on its own. If it doesn't, then I'll have to take her to the vet. And I know that she needs to go to the vet and I'm going to take her. Like I have to take her because I don't want it to get worse and don't, don't want her to be in pain. But then you have in the back of your mind, I'm about to put her through something traumatic. It's for her benefit, but she doesn't obviously understand that. So then 
I get her, her, her harness and her leash and she just spins. She thinks she's going for a walk. And then I take her in the car and then it slowly kicks in. And then we get to the vet and she just starts shaking and hiding. It's so horrible. Oh my gosh. And this is all different vets. It doesn't matter which vet it is. It doesn't matter which groomer. Like it's just anyone. Oh my gosh. It's heartbreaking. I feel like I'm like tormenting her, but it's for her and good. My sweet girl. You got crusty ears now from your little eardrops, hey? Yeah. Even that, like having to administer eardrops and she doesn't understand. I know, darling. I know. Anyway, sorry for the depressing stories today. I've just trauma dumped. Not trauma, that's a bit dramatic. Stress dumped. <laughs> On everyone watching. So I hope your day is going well. <laughs> sorry. Um... Yeah, all the best. <laughs>